Welcome to the Combat Sports in Africa podcast. This podcast is about combat sports development on the continent of Africa. Africa is not a country, it's a continent made up of over 50 countries and we're going to highlight the many coaches, athletes, academics, sports journalists, and the local to international supporters of amateur and professional combat sports across the continent of Africa. This is episode number one, our very first episode, which is going to feature an international supporter of the sport of jiu-jitsu in Ethiopia. Our guest is none other than Dr. Tege Degne, a lifelong martial artist in the art and combat sport that is jiu-jitsu. In August of 2021, he was awarded his sixth Dan by the German Jiu-Jitsu Federation. He's now a grandmaster. In addition to that, back in June 2021, Dr. Degne was awarded the Federal Cross of Merit by the Federal Republic of Germany for his volunteer work, focusing on his jiu-jitsu and judo sports development work in Ethiopia. Along with his development work there, in addition to his voluntary work focused on the integration of people in Germany. Now this award, the Federal Cross of Merit by the Federal Republic of Germany, is the highest recognition given by the Federal Republic for services for the common good. Dr. Degne has a PhD in economics from Humboldt University, Berlin, and he's also the very first Ethiopian to have formally brought and established modern jiu-jitsu to Ethiopia and connect the sport and that country to the global jiu-jitsu community. He's truly a combat sports development pioneer for Ethiopia and an individual whom I've interviewed for a documentary on the sports development of jiu-jitsu in Ethiopia, which I'm still working on. Please note this interview was conducted back in mid-July 2021, a week prior to the Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympic Games. Okay, let's get to the interview now. Dr. Tsege Degne, you've recently been awarded the Federal Cross of Merit with Ribbon from the Federal Republic of Germany. Congratulations. What does this mean for you personally and professionally? Thank you very much, Gamami. Uh, it is... Uh... It is a special honor and pleasure uh, for me. Uh, uh, I, I think I never, I never thought uh, to be awarded uh, by the highest uh, merit of a cross of the German Federal Republic. Uh, and uh, I mean, it is, uh, it is telling a story of uh, a person with migration background. It is a story of. Uh, uh, me about me it's a story about uh, you or about a lot of people who are um, who have uh, who has uh, migration background uh, coming from their home country and uh, uh, integrated in in a new country and you know, getting in a new home uh, and working for you know, common good uh, promoting uh, uh, voluntarism uh, and uh, supporting uh, the people relationship between uh, two continents and at the end of the day uh, as well as in by using different means uh, like sport uh, like knowledge trans by using knowledge transfer uh, so uh, for me it is uh, a great honor and pleasure uh, uh, as well as very amazing be, because I never thought that uh, I will get such kind of uh, honor. Well, congratulations to you uh, again for that. Obviously, you've done a tremendous amount of work, as you mentioned, in volunteerism and, and the transfer of knowledge as it pertains to project management, but also martial arts. And, and this is why I wanted to ask you right from the top, uh, Doctor, what is the current state of jiu-jitsu and judo in Ethiopia? How widely are both of these sports practiced and by whom? Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the current status of the sport is very slow uh, compared to the last six years uh, in, the, in the quantity. I mean, uh, the quality is really very high now what we have. We have uh, Jujutsu Kass, uh, African Championships, and judo class uh, who are uh, graduated from World uh, IGF Academy. Uh, but in quantity, uh, we have very small number of uh, jiu-jitsu class and judo class. This is due to the corona pandemic uh, and the system uh, to get a sport license in Ethiopia, which is very difficult, I think, in the world. 
Uh, in terms of quality, as I said, it is uh, the highest with international world qualified professionals. Uh, we have good coaches. Uh, and we are getting also um, support from international judokas and jiu who are living in Ethiopia. Now, can you tell us how you got involved in martial arts sports development uh, in Ethiopia? Martial arts is my passion. Uh, I think, uh, <laughs> you know that. I've been living, uh, I've been training in martial arts in Germany for over 30 years. Uh, it has uh, always been my desire uh, to transfer knowledge uh, to my home country. As I said before, uh, sport is uh, one of the means of transferring uh, my knowledge. Uh, and the idea is to support uh, my, my home country, Ethiopia, to make a knowledge transfer uh, to those who have not uh, got uh, the chance like me, first place. Uh, so I started jiu-jitsu training in, uh, to give training in Ethiopia, uh, just uh, uh, 14, years, 14 years ago, I think in 2007. And after that, I started to establish uh, a judo and jiu-jitsu structure in Ethiopia. Uh, we established the first uh, association that licensed under Ministry of Justice and, uh, you know, uh, then uh, the association was uh, suspended or lost the license again. And then uh, we had another license and, and uh, this our sports uh, commission and uh, the same procedure, they didn't uh, renew the license. And now we are always, uh, you know, uh, doing the same procedure. We have clubs and the regional um, associations also. Uh, after, after all, uh, despite great challenges, it was very difficult uh, for me to stop war at once. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, uh, I thought this, um, I have a professional experience in hobby martial arts that are, uh, that is ripe to be transferred. Uh, 14 years ago, it was only technical point of view. And now it is more philosophical or how can we develop young people to be a good citizen? And uh, as I said, uh, this, this point is to support the users. Uh, uh, those are the majority of Ethiopia and able to, to catch knowledge uh, who are, they are very amazing. They are very uh, quick uh, to catch knowledge and they are uh, willing to learn. Uh, that was the point. And the other point uh, is also uh, this young generation, they need uh, our support and experience in order to avoid uh, that they will take uh, the wrong ways. And the martial art is the one that will show them uh, the right way. Now, what sports are the most popular in Ethiopia from both the number of participants and also from like public viewership, media consumption and overall popularity? Uh, in, the, in the first place uh, is the sport. Uh, Ethiopia is known for long distance athletics. Uh, we have, I think, with hundreds of thousands of participants and thousands of world class athletes at the top of uh, the long distance world record holders. Uh, and the second place is the sport of soccer, football, with a strong fan base. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's not enough to lead uh, in Africa as it did centuries ago. Uh, but I heard uh, the Ethiopian football team has qualified for coming African championship. African Cup. Uh, the Ethiopian athletics sport is uh, one of the leading, uh, not only in Ethiopia, also in Africa. Uh, and it is uh, in the world also, particularly through our long distance runners. Uh, you know, currently we need uh, a new generation that is able to replace uh, the famous athletes. And I think they are working on it. Uh, I think it is also very important to invest uh, more uh, in quality uh, than in quantity when we come to sports like martial arts. 
regard, regarding the martial art, I think in uh, Taekwondo, we have uh, 10,000 of uh, participants, practitioners. And uh, I heard uh, a couple of days ago, Ethiopia will send one athlete um, to Tokyo in World Taekwondo. It is wow. a big milestone. I wish we can, uh, we did it in, in uh, judo. Right. Now, what are some of the challenges you've encountered in trying to further promote the sport of jiu-jitsu and judo in Ethiopia? Well, uh, th there, are, there, are, there, there were many challenges and still there are many challenges. Uh, starting with the local sport authorities uh, uh, who give uh, the license uh, to us and take them back anytime as they wish or with the lack of infrastructure, uh, uh, sport equipment, uh, uh, like, you know, we need tatamis, uh, mats. Uh, it, is, it is very challenging. And uh, also, uh, as I said, uh, we have a problem with the quantity uh, because uh, uh, these sports need uh, uh, more quality and high technical capability and uh, once need to stay a long years to uh, to become a master in grappling sport it is uh, not easy so uh, you know that's why we are losing uh, uh, many uh, many of uh, our uh, our athletes who are getting back to wings uh, wushu or kickbox uh, or back to taekwondo or karate uh, and as i said we need uh, more equipment like tatami the grade of injuries is very high uh, it is also difficult to have appropriate appropriate time uh, because most of them are in school or preparing for examination uh, there are many uh, that are not able to afford the cost of the transportation uh, when we give national seminar from regional states, for example. Uh, even they are not able to afford uh, to pay uh, for the dojo. Trainer are not able, uh, able to the, the rent for the dojo and students are not able to pay also their membership fee. Uh, at the first place, the professional should be supported and accepted, uh, what I'm suggesting, uh, because there are those uh, who know the new sport and able to introduce with its nature and quality. Um, uh, and I had uh, a very big challenge uh, to, uh, we are trying to, 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 to bind uh, Jido and Jiu Jitsu together. And we, we faced uh, people that have no idea about Judo in Jiu Jitsu, never seen uh, probably before on the tatami and they said uh, that are completely different sports and uh, we don't need to have, uh, we don't need, uh, we need only to have Judo extra. We have to, uh, if you have a club license, uh, it is only for Judo. You cannot have a Jiu Jitsu license uh, to your Judo. Uh, they didn't understand what means synergy, synergy uh, in this context. Uh, and there is a lot of uh, challenging this, of course. And also when you come from, uh, from abroad as a diaspora, uh, you will be uh, misunderstood. Uh, uh, you, you are supporting with tatamis, with the judo geese, uh, uh, with equipment, with knowledge for nothing, good for nothing, uh, based on voluntarism. But uh, probably some of them thinks uh, that you are getting some benefit of that. And uh, that uh, is also some kind of challenge, this kind of mindset, I think. Uh, uh, but you need uh, resilience in this point of view. Now, do most African countries have a commonality of problems and challenges when it comes to sports development? Or are these problems that, that you're listing generally like unique to each country, in your opinion? I think uh, these problems are very similar in Africa. I think uh, because I have uh, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, uh, many con conversation with other African countries I have been involved with in African Jiu Jitsu, in African Judo. And uh, the main problem is a financial problem in Africa and lack of infrastructure. Uh, professional trainers, training equipment in Venice, uh, Judo Gis. Uh, it, the, the transport cost is very high. It is very amazing. Uh, it is better to travel from Germany to, to Ethiopia than to travel from Ethiopia to South Africa or to Mauritius or to other African countries. Uh, it, is, uh, it is very high. Uh, even when, when, uh, when uh, from athletes want to travel from Nigeria to Cameroon, they come from, it is very close, they are very neighbors, uh, but they come from Nigeria, uh, to, from Cameroon to Addis Ababa, from West Africa to East Africa, and then they will change the plane in Addis Ababa and they will travel back to West Africa to uh, Yaoundé or uh, Lagos. Uh, uh, that is, uh, you know, Africa is sometimes geographical in this sense, uh, Africa, uh, but, you know, Africa is very diverse, uh, but the infrastructure, uh, it makes it very difficult uh, to have a kind of continental uh, uh, championships, uh, regional championships, uh, knowledge transfer seminar. Uh, as I said, it is even to international seminars and Congress uh, to participate, uh, it is very expensive. And the sport authorities have no such, such kind of a budget or finance, uh, particularly for martial art. Uh, the organization and the structure of federations uh, may, may differentiate from country to country, but there is sometimes, most of the time, you will find a power struggle in the leadership. Uh, last time we had a problem in uh, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in one two African countries. Uh, I mean, even the the police were there, and uh, even in the television, and a lot of things. Uh, there was an election, and the election was boycotted, uh, and uh, the door was closed. Uh, and after the election was finished, they let the other parties uh, to, to participate. It is uh, really very, very, uh, what happening is there is always, not always, most, uh, uh, most, mostly you will find a kind of power struggle. Uh, I mean, power struggle you will find also in, in Europe, but in peaceful way, uh, I think that should be in peaceful, in peaceful way. I also see, uh, in, 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 other, in other hand, I, I see hope in the young generation who are eager for new knowledge uh, that can be easily learned and uh, who are effectively absorbed. Uh, the Afri Africa had a big, a big potential uh, uh, because of obliged uh, the young generation. Really insightful stuff there. Um, now, what are some of the potential, what's the potential and opportunities for combat sports uh, development in Ethiopia and for other African countries? Uh, as, as I said, uh, two thirds of the African and Ethiopian nation, uh, as uh, it is very young, uh, which is uh, uh, the big potential for martial art. I see I also see. Um, I also see. Um, they are very uh, eager uh, to learn uh, and to 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 apply what they learn quickly as possible. And they are uh, very tough uh, in physical uh, resistance. They can't train without tatami. I remember in Ethiopia, in a hard floor, they are training. Uh, you know. Ogoshi, throwing techniques, uh, uh, it was unbelievable to see. Uh, 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 you know, fall techniques and so on. So uh, you cannot uh, imagine such kind of uh, uh, resistance, resilience uh, in, in Europe. And no one will get without tatami. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that is uh, what I see as the potential and opportunities. If, if I can just say, I, I also witnessed that the, these, these, these students training on essentially throwing themselves on the floor and doing full break falls. And it was, it was remarkable. As, as you mentioned, there was a lot of heart, a lot of talent, uh, and a lot of dedication, even though they didn't have the resources, they still put in the effort in training and executing uh, throws, as you mentioned, which was, uh, which was quite remarkable. Now, how should one measure success when it comes to sports development in Ethiopia? I, I think it should be focused on quality and quantity, not, not on quantity. Uh, we have uh, the first African champion and vice champion in Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I mean, we have Yared, he is uh, very experienced in African Jiu Jitsu. Even in World Games, we have Yared uh, participated, I think, uh, six, uh, fifth place in the World Championship, um, fourth place. Uh, and we have Meskaram, uh, vice, uh, vice champion, uh, African. Um, uh, female uh, uh, vice champion. And uh, I, I mean, that is what I'm calling quality. It's a measurable has you have a key performance indicators, uh, what you can, uh, that, that can be, uh, uh, be measured. Uh, we have black belt holders in judoka who have participated in uh, the IGF academies. Uh, uh, we have JJF uh, uh, referees. Uh, we have athletes that visited uh, JJF referee seminars, IJF referee seminars, uh, and uh, the quality is very important to, to say the level of belt holders. Uh, we have also see. Uh, we have also. We are just observing. Um, uh, a kind of uh, athletes uh, getting uh, uh, belts from not known organization. Uh, that is, I think, in my opinion, it is very dangerous for Africa as well as Ethiopia. Uh, so we have to be uh, very, uh, very, uh, uh, we have to focus on from which organization they are getting knowledge and receiving their licenses, their belt. That is also a uh, point of uh, uh, that, that is the, 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 the measurement level, what we need to have. It's interesting because uh, you've mentioned quality a few times over and over, you know, the, the, the quality of athlete to focus on the quality of teaching. It's uh, you, you're really emphasizing the need for quality, which is uh, very important, I, I would imagine, for, for sports development. Now, I think you've already somewhat answered this question, doctor, but uh, I'll go ahead and ask you. Can you tell us some of the major milestones and achievements you and your team have been able to achieve on and off the tatami uh, from Ethiopian athletes competing internationally and winning to major institutional sports development wins? Yes, of course. We have uh, we we have uh, uh, some uh, major milestones. Um, uh, just to mention, uh, we just enabled the participation of uh, three athletes in Saint Saint Petersburg World Championship. Uh, it was 2010 uh, for the first time ever in the history of Africa and the Jiu Jitsu International Federation as well. Uh, we uh, we enabled also in Vienna uh, 2014 uh, for athletes in the World Championships. I think uh, you recorded uh, all. Uh, the, well, I was there. I was there. Yeah. And uh, we uh, enabled and coached uh, the participation of one athlete in. Uh, 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 Roklav uh, World Championship in Jiu Jitsu, uh, Yared, that achieved fourth place in his category. And he was also in the ranking, uh, first rank in Africa. Uh, we enabled participation of Ethiopian in Spain uh, at the seminar for police and military, 
coach with their uh, athletes and uh, uh, the participation of uh, athletes, Ethiopian athletes in the German international seminar and German open. Uh, and we enabled uh, predominantly with my compatriot, uh, Johannes da, Mr. Grandmaster Johannes Daxbar, uh, the participation of uh, two athletes in Paris uh, Judo World Championship for the first time ever in Ethiopian sport history. Uh, and uh, two athletes in Dusseldorf uh, Grand Prix in Germany. I think you you were also there. I was there. <laughs> yeah, recorded all those things. Uh, we enabled and supported participation of one athlete in World Games 2017 uh, and uh, also participation of Ethiopian East uh, and African uh, championships. And uh, whereas Ethiopia became African Jiu-Jitsu championship in Morocco 2019. Um, we achieved, uh, I mean, in, in person, uh, that was a big, uh, big success. Uh, um, and uh, we, we sent a lot of tatamis, I think 500, 600 tatamis, a lot of protectors, uh, band, hand protectors, knee protectors, uh, hundreds of judo keys, uh, judo training equipment, uh, a lot of, you know, just boxing punch, uh, jiu-jitsu shirts, uh, uh, I mean, it is, uh, we have a lot of, we send a lot of materials, you know, uh, belts uh, from uh, uh, what we collecting from German and national team from uh, uh, different uh, organizations that were uh, Adidas, a German Olympic Confederation uh, by supporting through the German Foreign Office and German Embassy in Addis Ababa. Uh, they enabled uh, to send uh, those all uh, staffs uh, to Ethiopia. Uh, we enabled uh, to send uh, many uh, trainers to Ethiopia uh, to give uh, uh, in judo and jiu jitsu seminars, even zone seminars. Uh, and we put a link uh, uh, judo and jiu jitsu um, professionals uh, who are working in Ethiopia and uh, uh, with the Ethiopians. Um, uh, they found uh, just a big family of judo and jiu-jitsu because uh, now we have a big family uh, with those uh, who are come from abroad, from Japan, from Belgium, from Armenia, from Italy, uh, from France. Uh, I, I'm not sure, probably from Canada, uh, USA. Uh, you know, they, when they, they're going to work in Ethiopia in different international organization, if they have a belt in judo, BJJ or jiu-jitsu, uh, then they are very welcome. They will contact us and we put the link and even they, they, they deployed us uh, as a sensei and they give the seminars they are very close to our athletes. And uh, so we, uh, we just established a kind of people-to-people -people, uh, relationship. That's an incredible list of uh, accomplishments and, and milestones. And as you mentioned, it seems like it's, uh, it's obviously a global effort at a local and national level in, in the country. And, and it's, it's incredible just to hear all of those, uh, those achievements. And obviously there's been challenges uh, on the way, as you mentioned, but it's it's great to see that things are still pushing forward after all these years of of you know active uh, teaching and and engagement for, from you and your team. Now, the next question I have for you is, uh, where do you see the state of judo and jujitsu? I guess in in the future, what what are you envisioning for 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 this kind for for it, for these sports in that country? Yeah. Uh, we have uh, second dan holders in both arts. I mean, the highest level is second dan to Ethiopians, but we have foreigners who are living in Ethiopia with the third dan, fourth dan. Um, uh, and we have, uh, as I said, an African champion, African vice champion. 
we have clubs in Addis Ababa, we have clubs in Hawassa, Southern uh, Regional State, we have in the Redewa, uh, we have in Gondar in the Amara uh, Regional State. Um, we are trying also to uh, to open in 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 Adama uh, and other uh, regional states. Uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Daxbar uh, uh, and I, uh, uh, as well as uh, other trainers, uh, try to to travel across the country uh, and to give uh, seminars. Even uh, uh, I remember in Magale, uh, Mr. Daxbar was there and give uh, judo training. Uh, and. Uh, uh, next time we will try to to go around uh, to uh, the country and to give uh, further training, uh, and we are also able to give judo training to refugees. Uh, refugee, uh, uh, it is very important point, and we will try to 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 elaborate our potential uh, and uh, to give also uh, to continue. Uh, our our efforts on uh, on training or training to refugees, uh, and we have managed to build a strong international community of judokas and jujutsu cars, and we will to continue this um, community, this family. We have uh, a very good uh, cooperation with the international judo and jujutsu federations. Uh, they know Ethiopia very well. They know our challenges. They know uh, our name. Uh, and we will we will we will uh, try to uh, to to strengthen our relationship uh, further with these uh, federations and also to with Ethiopian sport authorities. Uh, despite all challenges, uh, uh, we 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 will try to be uh, to fulfill their their. Uh, request uh, which is very difficult to fulfill uh, but uh, we will try to do our best and also to other martial arts in Ethiopia it's uh it's 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 great to hear that uh, again the 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 involvement on on so many levels when, when it comes to to this to these sports of judo and jiu-jitsu in, in Ethiopia and I think there's as you mentioned a lot of potential and a lot of uh, opportunities there for, for further growth, both uh, competitors and coaches and support supporters uh, locally and globally. Now, last question for you, sir. Now you've been doing this, as you mentioned, since 2007, that's about 14 years, right? You, you've been actively involved in this. Uh, you've been doing it for many years as a martial artist. Uh, the question is, what inspires you to keep going and achieving your goals for the development of jiu-jitsu and judo in Ethiopia? What keeps you motivated and going? Uh, uh, that's a very, very interesting question. Uh, I think uh, to make a difference, uh, improve life standard, as I said before, to make good citizens out of the, the dojo and contribute for the quality. Last but not least, to see uh, challenges as a chance and to make us out of these chances changes and my favorite uh, quote from madeba uh, mandela uh, is uh, uh, it always seems impossible until it is done that's what uh, just to, what i like to say you know Dr. Degne, I just want to say you, uh, uh, I, I really respect your, your motivation and your, your dedication for, for the developments of these sports. Uh, you yourself, of course, are a lifelong martial artist and you're a very passionate, focused and organized individual. I've seen you in action, of course, and you're, you're an inspiration, my friend. I, I want to thank you very much for, for your time. Uh, my last question for you is where can people find you online if they have any questions in regards to these sports or how they can get involved? Uh, I have uh, my email address, uh, webmaster at uh, degine, D -E -G -I -N -A -H dot com. Uh, and uh, yes, I have also, I think we have EJJA info, our, our website. 
uh, they can they can find uh, more information about me. Even I have also my own uh, website, but uh, uh, it is some currently it is using for more uh, other topics. Uh, so I would like also to thank you, Garmami. Uh, you are a pioneer uh, to say uh, to introduce. Uh, uh, judo and jiu-jitsu out of Africa uh, to the rest of the world. Uh, you are our voice uh, and such kind of podcast is very important. Uh, uh, make transparency uh, and uh, you are building a bridge. Uh, and for that, I would love to thank you from bottom of my heart. And I would like, I would like also to thank uh, your listeners uh, uh, to to having me uh, today. Uh, thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. And we look forward to having you on in uh, future episodes. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Combat Sports in Africa podcast. I hope you enjoyed that interview. Episode two will be available very soon. Thank you very much for listening.